Tailwind CSS, a very popular CSS framework that allows us to rapidly build out modern websites without ever having to leave our HTML. Pretty cool, right? Now, Tailwind is composed of what they call low-level utility classes, which we can combine to then build out any design that we want. Compared to other CSS frameworks such as Bootstrap or maybe even Materialize, which are more like a UI kit that offer pre-built components. So within this video, I'm going to show you how we can set up and install Tailwind into our project. We're going to cover some of the basic configuration that we can apply, and then we'll wrap everything up by building our first little component using this framework. So before we dive in, if you are enjoying the video, be sure to scroll down and leave a like on this video as it really does help out the channel, and it helps get this video in front of more people that are trying to learn Tailwind. Now to get started here within VS Code, we just want to create a few files. So first off, we're going to create an index.html file here for our markup. Then we want to create a new folder here, and we'll call this src for source. And within here, we're going to create a new file called input.css. Now, since we're going to be installing Tailwind as a dev dependency through NPM, we first need to create a package.json file. So to create this, we just want to open up our terminal here within VS Code, and we want to run the command npm, we'll say init, and then we'll pass the y flag here, and that'll create an empty package.json file. So now that we have that, we can begin to install Tailwind. Now we do this by running a command here called npm install, and we want to pass the d flag here to save this as a dev dependency, and then we just say Tailwind CSS. And we also need to create a Tailwind configuration file, and we can do this with the command npx Tailwind CSS, and we want to say init. So there you go, we now install Tailwind into our project. Well, kind of, we still need to do a few more things here. Now here within our Tailwind configuration, we want to add the paths to all the files that we want to use Tailwind with, and we do that through this content property right here. Now this may differ depending on where you have the files that you want to use Tailwind with. So in this scenario here, we have our index.html file directly here in the root of this folder. So all we want to do here is we're going to get or look for all the files that end with the extension of .html here inside of our root folder. So you may be wondering, what exactly does this do? Well, when we configure this property here, as we've done, when we run our build process, which we'll get to in just a moment, it's going to scan all of these files here inside of our root, and it's going to look for the extensions of .html, and it's going to look inside of those HTML files, and it's going to check and see which Tailwind classes we have used, and then it's going to add those classes to our Tailwind style sheet. So instead of adding the entire library to our Tailwind style sheet, it's only going to be importing what we're going to be needing. Now, Tailwind works off what are called layers, and we need to import the three main layers here into our input.css, and how we import these is using the Tailwind directive. So we'll say at Tailwind here, and we're going to use the base layer, the components layer, and also the utilities layer. So like I mentioned earlier, we're going to have a build process, which will scan all of our files here, and then it's going to build our CSS file. So to handle the building process, we're going to create a script here inside of our package.json. Now we aren't going to be needing this test script here, so let's replace it with our Tailwind script. So first off, let's actually create the script itself. So we want to start by running this Tailwind CSS command here, followed by our input flag here for the input style sheet, which is going to be our inside of our source folder, and then we have our input CSS file right here. Then we have this O flag, which is for the output, which is where we want to then send that newly built Tailwind CSS file, which we're going to create a folder called public, and then it's going to be called output.css. Then at the end here, we have this watcher, and what this is going to do is watch for any changes within our HTML file, so that each time that we may add a new class, this is going to rebuild, and then it's going to add that class that we use to our output.css file right here. And last thing here we want to do is just rename this. So obviously we don't want to call it test. We're going to call this build colon tailwind. And there we go. That's actually everything we need to do to start using Tailwind. So let's check it out. Now, before we do anything, we first want to run our newly created script here of build Tailwind. So inside of our terminal here, we want to run the command npm run, and we're going to say build colon Tailwind. So if we hit enter here, you can see some things happen within our terminal. But the most important thing we see is now within our root folder here, we have this public folder, and it contains our output.css. And right now you can see it just contains some very basic things right now, which we're not going to go through it but as you can see we do have things within here so now as we begin to make changes within our html file here this output.css file is going to rebuild with all the classes that we're going to need 
So let's start by creating our basic boilerplate here with Emmet. And then what we want to do is link up our style sheet here. So we'll create a link tag. And then we want to navigate to our public folder. And we want to say our output.css. And now we're ready to begin working with Tailwind. Now to view our HTML file here, I'm going to be using a extension called Live Server. So with this installed, I can right click on our HTML file here and we can click on this open with Live Server here. And then this is going to open it inside of a new browser window. Now what I have here is a very simple restaurant card which you're going to replicate and this will get you familiar with some of Tailwind's classes and how we can combine those classes to make something like you're seeing right here. So let's get started. So before we begin to even write a single line of markup, you may be wondering, well, how am I supposed to know all the classes needed to create something like this card component? Now, if you're just getting started using Tailwind, you may be overwhelmed by the thought of having to memorize every single class that this framework has to offer. And I'm here to tell you that's just not the case. Now, what I do recommend is becoming very great friends, especially in the beginning with the Tailwind documentation, as it's going to be a very great resource for understanding how this framework works. So here within the documentation, I currently have pulled up all the utility classes for the display property. So we have a column here on the left hand side that gives us the class name and on the right hand side, we have the property that it's setting and then the value of that property. Now, very quickly when using Tailwind, you're going to realize that the class naming convention is very explicit. Now, what I mean by that is, for example, here, if we wanted to set something to display flex, which is right here, as you can see, we just simply use the class name of flex. And also, for example, if you wanted to set something to inline flex here, we have the class available called inline flex. Okay, let's say that we're now done looking at our display property and now we want to learn how we can change the background color of an element. Well, on the left hand side here of the documentation, we have this nice navigation, which is going to list out a bunch of different CSS properties. So if we scroll through this here, you'll see we have things for flexbox and grid, spacing, sizing, typography, and we want to look for the background here or backgrounds and then we have something for the background color and as you can see here we have all the classes that we can use to change the background color of an element now to me that was quite tedious having to scroll through a navigation here trying to find what we needed and there's a much easier way to do this so instead of having to scroll through all this what we can actually do is use the search bar here so if we click on this, we're going to have a modal pop up here, which will allow us to search the documentation. So let's say we want to change the text color. So we'll just type in text color here. And as you can see, the first result is what we're going to be looking for. So if we click on this, we're then going to get listed all the classes here to change our text color. So as you can see, this is going to be a much easier way to navigate through the documentation. All right, so enough of all the boring stuff. Let's actually get to building our component. So for this, I want to use some custom colors and I also want to use a custom font. Now, Tailwind has a very large color palette, but it may not always be the case where you can use a color from their palette and you want to use something to fit more of the theme of your project. And the same thing goes for the font. Tailwind has a few default fonts that you can choose from, but once again, they may not fit the theme of what you're trying to build. So let's take a look at how we can set some custom colors and also a custom font. So where we handle all this customization is within our Tamil configuration file. And let's begin by setting some custom colors. So when we created this file, we were given by default the Steam property here. And within here, we have another property of extend. And this is where we want to define all of our custom colors. So we'll create a colors property here. And then we just want to set all the custom colors that we want to use within this. So we'll just paste in some values here. So we're going to have two custom colors of custom blue and also custom purple. Now for our custom font, we're going to be using Google here and we're going to be using a font family called Poppin. So what we're going to do is copy this link tag here and then we just want to paste it here within our index.html inside of the head section. Then here inside of our configuration file, we just want to specify that we're going to be using a custom font. So how we do this is we don't want to do it within our extend property here. We just want to do it within our theme property. So we'll create a new property here called font family. And then what we want to do is just paste in the custom font that we're going to be using. So we gave it a name of Poppins because that's the name of the font that we're going to be using. And then within an array here, we just have Poppins. And as a backup, we're going to be using sans serif. Now, it is worth mentioning that there is quite a bit more you can do in regards to customization here within our configuration file. So we're only really scratching the surface here by setting some custom colors here and also a custom font family. So if you do want to learn more about the customization that you can apply here within this configuration file, be sure to reference the Tailwind documentation. 
So as you become more familiar with Tailwind, as I mentioned, the class naming convention you realize is very explicit. So one extension that I definitely recommend using that I'm going to be using here within this video is called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. And one of its main features is autocomplete. And what this does is it offers us intelligent suggestions for the class names based on what we're typing. So this means we can spend more time actually building and scaffolding out our components quickly instead of having to keep referencing the tail and documentation. So let's begin to apply some classes here. And we're going to start with our body tag, which is going to be wrapping our entire card component. So let's create our class here. And the first class that we're going to apply is going to be for our font family. So we just want to specify font here, file by dash and then the name that we specified within our talent configuration now currently you're not going to see any recommendations here and I think there's a little bug going on with the extension where to actually see any recommendations we need to take our cursor outside of the class here and come back in and then if we begin typing we're going to see those recommendations here from our extension so we just want to select font dash poppins here so now if we hover over this like I was mentioning you're going to see a preview of what this class is going to apply so you can see it's applying the font family property here and it has a value of poppins and then as a backup it's going to be sans serif now we also want to use a class called grid which is going to set the display to grid then we're going to use a class called place content center which is going to be a very easy way to align all the content here into the middle of our screen and then lastly we want to set a height value on here and we're going to use a class of min h screen which is going to give it a min height of 100 vh now within the body we're going to create a div for the card itself and we'll apply a few classes here so first off we're going to set the display to flex then we want to set the flex direction to a column here so we'll use a class called flex cowl then we're going to set a max width on here and we do this by saying max dash w and now we have a list of options here so for this component i want to set the max width to 350 pixels here so if we start off at the smallest class that we have for the max width you can see that the value right now is 320 pixels and if we go Go down to the next smallest one available we have the value set at 384 so as you can see that's kind of in between what we're looking for and none of these actual classes are going to work for us but luckily we don't have to always use these if we don't want to and in our case here we want to use a custom max with value instead of the predefined classes that they're offering here and we can do this using an arbitrary value so how we actually define an arbitrary value is by saying dash here and then we use a square bracket notation and now we can pass in any pixel value that we want inside of these square brackets to kind of create our own custom class here so we can say 350 pixels here and now if we hover over it you can see that now we have set the max width property here to 350 pixels then to finish off this div here, we're going to add a class called shadow MD, which is going to add a box shadow. And then we just want to round the corners here and we're going to use a class called rounded dash MD. Now within this card, I'm going to be adding an image. So I created this folder here called assets and inside of that folder, we have this photo here. Now within this div, let's create a tag for our image here and we're going to specify the source to be within our assets folder. Then we have our photo, then we'll set an alt tag here and we'll just set this to burger dish. And then we want to apply a few classes here. So we want to set a max height on here. So we're going to say max dash H and we want to use the value of 36, which equates to about 144 pixels. Okay. Then we're going to set another class on here called object cover, which is going to set the object fit property to cover. And then lastly, we want to apply a border radius to the top left hand corner and the top right hand corner of our image. So we'll use a class called round it dash T for the top. And then we'll say dash MD. And now, as you can see here within our browser, we have our image, which is pushed into the center of our screen. And then we have a border radius on the top left hand corner and also the top right hand corner. So below our image here, we're going to create a div for all of our card content, and we're just going to apply a class here for some padding around all sides. So we're going to say P-4, which equates to about 16 pixels or one rim. Now within here, we'll start off with an H1 for our header, and it's going to say Burger Tower, and we want to apply a few classes. So first off, we're going to set the font size here, and we do this with a class of text, and then we're going to say XL, which equates to about 20 pixels. And then we also want to set a margin on the bottom here, which we'll say MB, and we'll do dash 1, which is about 4 pixels. Then we'll create an H2 here, and we'll have some information regarding the amount of stars and reviews. And once again, we'll apply some classes here. So we want to set a font size on this one to a little bit smaller. So we're going to use a class of SM for about a font size of 14 pixels. 
Then we're gonna set a margin bottom and then we'll use four this time for about 16 pixels. And we also wanna set a text color here. So we're gonna use a color of zinc and then we're gonna use the value of 600 here. Next, we'll add some paragraph tags here for some information about the restaurant itself. So let's add some classes to these. So we'll start off with the font size. So we'll use a class of text-xs for about a font size of 12 pixels. Then we'll set some margin on the bottom. So we'll say MB and we're going to use a value of 2 here for about 8 pixels. Then on the second paragraph tag here, we're going to add the same thing for the font size. We'll do a class of XS. Then we're going to apply some margin on the bottom, but this time we're going to do four. And then we'll set the text color to the zinc color that we used previously of 600. And then to wrap up this card, we're just going to add some buttons here. So we're going to have a button for viewing the website and also a button for ordering curbside. Now on the div itself that's wrapping the buttons, we're just going to add a few classes here. So first off, we're going to display this as flex. And then we want to add a class here called gap-x and the value of 2 here, which this will apply some column gap of 8 pixels between the two flex children here. And then we'll add some classes here to our buttons as well. So we'll start off by changing the text color to white. Then we'll adjust the font size to be 12 pixels. And we're going to add our custom color here for the background. So we're going to say BG. Then we'll say custom. And we have that value of custom purple. Then we want to apply some padding to the top and bottom. So we're going to use the class of PY along with the value of 2 here for about 8 pixels on the top and bottom of our button. Then we want to add some padding on the left and right. So we're going to say PX. And then we'll use a value of 3. And then finally, we're going to say rounded MD to round the corners here. And to save some timer, since these buttons are going to be using the same exact classes, we'll just copy and paste this in here. But instead of using our custom purple here for the background color, we'll change this to our custom blue. So normally it's very common to have some sort of hover effect to your button where the background changes or the text color changes. So let me show you how we can add a hover effect to our button while using Tailwind. So this is actually pretty easy to add. Now, by default, Tailwind comes with what are called variants, which allow us to target different pseudo elements such as hover, they have focus within, they have focus, and they have many, many more. And they're also used to target breakpoints, which allow us to kind of write inline media queries as well. But we're not going to touch upon that. But I will leave a list of all the variants down below in the description. So how we actually use the hover variant is we just want to type in hover here, followed by a colon, and then we want to apply the class that we want to add when we hover over this element so in our case what we want to do here is we're going to change the background color to the class of bg slate 400 here and also to make this transition smooth we're going to add a class called duration 300 which will add a nice transition of 300 milliseconds and now here on our card if we hover over our button you're going to see we have a nice smooth transition for the background color now, when developing, one thing that you always want to avoid doing is writing repetitive code. Now, when we use Tailwind, it's very easy to write repetitive code, and we can see that with the buttons that we created here, which use the same exact classes minus the background color to create the same exact button. Now, one way we can avoid writing repetitive code while using Tailwind is to use something called the Apply Directive and create a global class. Now, where we do this is within our input.css, where we import all of our Tailwind layers. So what we want to do is create a class like we normally would with CSS. But instead of actually defining properties like font size and all that other stuff, what we want to do is actually use the apply directive and apply all the Tailwind classes that we want to apply for our button here. And now back here inside of our HTML file, as you can see, I removed all of the classes for our button now. So as you can see, they're back to their default state with the background color. But now if we apply our class of button here, we're going to see we have back all those initial styles. But now we just have them stored inside of a class called button. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you now have a basic understanding of how to get started working with this framework. Now, if you still want to continue learning more about Tailwind, I also do have a few other videos here on the channel that you can check out, such as building a modern landing page from scratch. And I also go over how to implement a dark and a light mode to your application while using Tailwind. So anyways, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like on it down below. And if you are new here, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.